Welcome to being a bridesmaid in 2020 where you have to cover your face. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, by the way, I got this face shield from HeroShield.com and the shipping is really quick and um, it matters to me that they're black owned. So I'm going to put a link in the description box. See how clear it is. No, they did not pay me to say. So let's talk about this wig that I styled with a bridesmaid in mind. And I need you guys to tell me in the comment section. As a bridesmaid, would you wear this? And it's okay to be honest, okay? You can be honest about it. All right, let's get started. Don't forget to like, don't forget to comment, and don't forget to subscribe. We are going to be using the Nia wig from suzyxo.com. And I prefer this wig because it is an average density. So it is full, but it is not too full. It is just full enough. The density is 200 grams. And this is a body weight. The wig is freshly washed, there's no product on it at this time, and we're going to start with the part. The knots have already been bleached and the part has been kind of customized, I'm going to customize it some more. I'm going to use this serum that I used to straighten hair. I'm going to put a link in the description box, of course. I'm going to start by setting the part to be really flat with the curling iron, and I like to apply my product with a makeup brush because I don't like to get my fingers messy. So I just apply the product right there on the edges. I don't put it on the lace, just at the roots where the part is. And then I'm going to use a curling iron. I put it on the highest. And the hair can resist because it is really good hair. And I use a comb to guide it where I want it to go. And then I use the hot iron to press on it to make it really, really flat. So the iron is very hot and it's supposed to spend more time on the hair than on the lace. Do not burn your lace. So when you do this process, the iron just glides over the lace and it spends more time on the hair. So try to avoid the lace as much as possible so it doesn't burn. Now we're going to get the hair wet. That spray bottle, it just has water in it. And when you spray the hair, make sure it does not go to the top that you already did. Now, the top part has to stay dry. We don't want to mess it up with water. So apply water to the hair just so that it is slick when you try to pull it back and hold it in the ponytail. Okay, so some of you are learning from me, but I'm also here to learn from you. When it comes to this style, if you have any recommendation as to what could help the hair stay down slick, like really sleek and stay there without flyaways. I'd like to know what you would recommend because I was kind of reluctant to use gel on a wig. I know gel would be a good choice, but I don't know about applying gel on a wig. So I ended up using just mousse, but I had some flyaways, not too many, but not as many as I was comfortable with. So if you have a product that you would recommend that would prevent flyaways for the style that would help it stay down really, really solid and last through the whole night, you know how weddings are. If you know of such a product, I am open to welcoming that. Please leave a comment and let me know. So I want you to take note of the ponytail placement. And also notice that I add water as I go. And yeah, I add mousse. And I should have used more mousse, but I was running out and I was just I was just being cheap on this day, so I did not use a lot. You need to use a whole lot more than that. So I apply mousse and I want you to see the position of the ponytail. You see how I raise it up a little bit? So it is not all the way at the back of the head. Try to raise it off the nape of the neck by like a few inches. See, I'm trying to lift it up a little because you don't want it rubbing constantly to the back of your head. So I put it, that's like maybe three inches higher than where the wig cap meets your neck at the back. And if you've watched my other videos, you would notice that I like to use thread because I find that thread holds a wig better in place than an elastic band. An elastic band has this flexibility that does not really keep it solid in place. So when I want something to stay in place, like a ponytail or whatever, I always use thread. I just double it over a few times and then I wrap it like really, really tight. And then I do like a double knot when I'm done. Sometimes on top of the thread, I can add a few elastic bands. I actually recommend it, you should, because this is a wig you're gonna do a lot of activity in. 
you're probably gonna be dancing you're gonna be taking photos I know bridesmaids sometimes they're really busy so we're gonna need that wig to stay in place all night see how natural that ponytail looks look at the density that's why I really love it for this look and um, again that's just water I'm using and we're going to form curls at the back and I really recommend this length as well because the curls it produces are really tight if you use hair that is longer than this the problem you're gonna face is your curls are going to fall that's mousse that I'm going to use I think I ran out of the other bottle but I really love this one this is my favorite mousse because of the smell it smells so so good it actually smells yummy and for this look you're going to need a lot of mousse so apply the mousse generously okay don't be cheap like me <laughs> now here come the flexi rods as for size go for the smallest you have the smaller the curls the more they're going to really last long and stand out and form at the back like a ball because well that's the look we're going for so use the smaller size flexi rods i don't know what size this is i'm sure just by looking you can probably tell and if you need details on how to use a flexi rod i have a whole video with details showing you how to use a flexi rod and get the best curls and what direction to twist it and how to wrap the hair around it i have another video to that effect if you just look through my other youtube videos and for this it's really important that you use very small portions of hair if the hair portions you use are too big it's going to take forever to dry now first of all i'm using small portions and it still took a really long time to dry it is summer so i put it out in the sun but if you do this in the winter and you cut your hair too big it's gonna be days and it's still gonna be wet so in the winter my shortcut is that i put it over the air vents the air vents that pumps hot air into the house and it dries faster so this is how it looks when you're done and let the drying begin i actually use the hood dryer to help out to make it go faster now that it's all done we are going to take off the flexi rods you see those flyaways i told you about they're starting but um oh well it is what it is this is just an example this is just a demo so we're going to take those off and you're going to notice how tight the curls are i will not recommend using a curling rod to make these curls because I feel like they're just not gonna be tight enough I feel like they're going to fall like they're going to be affected by gravity but these ones are really tight like you see how they recoil even when I straighten them if you do that with um, curling iron curls they're going to fall they're going to hang low so I'm going to separate the curls using argan oil that's my favorite I'm gonna put it down in the description box and I'm just gonna go ahead and separate the curls so how I do this is I pick up a portion of the hair that was wrapped around the flexi rod and I apply a little bit of oil on it a little bit of argan oil and I separate that piece into several here's a close-up so I pick up one and then I grasp like small portions of it and then I wrap it around my finger and I let go get a small portion wrap around your finger let go just keep doing that and you're gonna do that to everything at the back everything that was curled so just do it and try to make it as smooth as possible I know I could do a better job than this but I was just being lazy so it looks okay at this point but I need to add some accessories so I got this from the beauty supply store and um, I just decided to experiment with them it is clams and I'm looking to add it to increase the volume because with special occasion hair for me it is go big or go home it's a special occasion okay so you always have to really go big and these are from the beauty supply store they're like a dollar each they're really cheap and I was looking to get a look like to add it at both sides but I do not like the color it does not really match with the human hair that I'm using so it looks a little bit different it looks a little bit off it is black yeah but that synthetic look is too present so I'm not gonna use this one 
you can check your local beauty supply stores and see what they have. I'm just looking to increase that ponytail at the back. So if it is just for a normal daily look, let's say it's just your birthday, I don't think you have to add these accessories. But like I said, if it's a special occasion like, you know, a wedding or an anniversary, I think you really have to add something to the back of it. Like that actually looks good. But I'm not feeling that color at all. It is showing some kind of separation. So this is another one that I got from eBay. I'm going to put in the description. And I think I like it better. It's like, um, it's like a scrunchie. And I'm just going to fit it around. And I think this one is a way better match. And it's not heavy at all. It's not going to pull your wig back. So we're going. I think we're going to go with this one. I think the color matches a little bit better and trust me nobody is going to be looking at your ponytail that closely to notice that you have a tiny synthetic piece in there nobody's gonna look that closely no one would even know and um, I'm just experimenting with different looks but I'm gonna go with this one and just to make things clear the wig itself is 100% virgin hair and the attachment is a synthetic piece from eBay, just to clear that up. Now it's time to try it on. And I don't think I mentioned before, but this is a lace closure wig. I try to stick with lace closure wigs because more people are comfortable with it. I am having trouble just picturing a situation where all the bridesmaids in the bridal party are okay wearing a frontal. So I kept it to a closure wig. So it is a lace closure wig. Now I'm going to um, I'm going to slick down some baby hairs later in the video, and I just want it known that it is my real baby hairs that I used because since it is not a frontal, you can't really do baby hairs on the sides of it unless someone has a method they use. And also about those flyaways, I used pump it up the pump it up spray to help with the flyaways. So yeah, I do the baby hairs at the front. The baby hairs at the front are from the wig, but the baby hairs at the sides are my real baby hairs, which I do not have a lot of, but <laughs> I managed with what I had. And as always, baby hairs are optional. Baby hairs are always optional. I just decided to do it for myself. And I slicked down my baby hairs using the got to be gel in a black container. That's just another accessory that I use and always attach it with clamps. You see that clamp? I'm trying to open and close it and make sure it's a very small size. See, it's hard to even hold because it's so small. So when putting ornaments on a wig, always use clamps. That's just another piece from eBay that I was playing around with and I don't know where I was going with that, but it did not turn out well. Let me make it. 